you genuinely want to stare down the barrel of his camera and admit that you support a plan that is universally reviled and is tonight going to get the biggest kicking mm. in the history of British politics. Can you explain why? I can explain why, uh, Piers. So I campaigned for Brexit and I voted for Brexit. Historically, uh, Parliament, I think you mentioned it earlier in your earlier discussion, <laughs> has been, um, there's been no majority for Brexit, but with the help of 17.4 million people, uh, we managed to persuade Parliament that actually uh, leaving the European Union, having a new relationship with Europe, is the right thing to do. And I think the withdrawal agreement delivers that. So whichever um, you know, future relationship you feel you want with the European Union, um, you still need a withdrawal agreement. And that withdrawal agreement has to have a backstop. So I think uh, this withdrawal agreement is the only thing on the table that will ensure that on the 29th of March we will leave the EU mm. and we will begin those trade negotiations. How can you, in all good conscience, how mm. can you, as a Brexiteer, somebody who voted for Brexit, how can you seriously look at that plan, which every person who's looked at it says the same thing? Whatever you think of it, it's not Brexit. It doesn't actually leave the European Union. It leaves the European Union in control of us in many, many ways. It is not Brexit. And yet you, a Brexiteer to your bootstraps, has suddenly decided that you can accept something which is not what most people think they voted for. I don't get it. Well, I, I think it is uh, Brexit because it allows us, after we pay our dues, our 39 billion, that we will not continue to pay vast sums of money. It allows us to set our own immigration policy. And, of course, it allows us to ultimately take back control of our trade and be able to strike deals with the rest of the world and trade with, with Europe mm -hmm. in a healthy way. That's why it's a, it's, a, it's a compromise. I don't disagree with you. If that's the point you're making, it is a compromise. It's but not Sahari, the perfect if we, deal. If, if, with the backstop there, we can't get out of that unless the European Union allows us to, which means we could be yoked into the EU without the ability to do many of those things you're talking about, including striking independent trade deals, and we are dependent on the EU. Well, that's actually not correct. So, first of all, we don't need to go into the backstop. We can extend the implementation period if necessary. Yesterday's further for exchange of letters... For how long? Well, one or two years, if right, necessary. Right, so what happens but, after that? Right. So, so very good point. It's not the European Union allowing us to. It will be set to a panel where if we feel that we have actually delivered on making sure that the Northern Ireland, Ireland uh, border remains open, we go to arbitration where there'll be two, well, two people from our side, two people from the European side and an independent person. So this, we'll is, a bo okay, this is a bombshell you're now re revealing on Good Morning Britain, a true, genuine breakthrough bombshell. You have just stated as a mm. member of this government, mm. that we ha can unilaterally then, without the EU, without the EU authorising it, we can get out of this. Is that right? No, no, that's not what I said. Mm. I thought you did uh, say that. No, what I said is we can actually go to a panel which is made up of two representatives from our side, two from the European Union, and an independent person, and actually put our case forward. Right, and, um, and, so and we still rely on the right. EU so if to the say e yes. they will arbitrate. Right, but just to clarify... It's not the, the EU on its own. If the EU point, but if the EU representatives say no, we can't do it, can we? That's the well, bottom line. First of all, they don't have, as I said... There will be two from the EU, two from the United Kingdom and one independent. And that panel will then arbitrate as to whether we have delivered on so our... So, again, again, I ask uh, you to clarify. It's really important, this. Mm. Can, will we be able to leave, then, if the EU doesn't want us to leave? It, well, that panel, as I said, are made up of two people from the United Kingdom, two from the European Union and one independent mm. will make that decision. But ultimately, the EU do not want us to remain in a backstop that allows us free access to their market without paying in and without, with, with controlling our borders, without having to take on free movement. That is an uncomfortable place for them too. But my point that I'm trying to make, and I make to my colleagues, it is a compromise, but it's a compromise that is uncomfortable for both sides. And if we don't vote through the withdrawal agreement, today, tonight, then you could end up with you know, actually not leaving 
paralysis in Parliament. Well, actually, hang on, no, 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 no. What we could end up with, no which deal. is what many, many proper Brexiteers, and I'm sorry to use that phrase, but I, you're not sounding like a Brexiteer anymore, is that what the, the real Brexiteers, who've, who've maintained, I think, the same position all along, is they want to be completely out of the European Union without any of the control valves which are in this plan. Now, if it comes to it on, May, uh, on March the 29th, we could, and this phrase crash out, I think, is actually uh, unfair. We would just simply it would run out of time and we would move to WTO. There would be a deal that we would do. It wouldn't have no deal, as people try and say. Well, we'd have and we no would, deal with but the what we would, But what we would be in that position, we would be completely severed in every way from the European Union. And, yes, it might be rocky, it might be turbulent, it might be, as some predict, a disaster. I don't think anybody really knows. I, as I keep saying, I remember all the apocalyptic warnings if we didn't join the Euro, and we didn't join the Euro, and it was the best thing that we never did. So I'm, I, I'm a little bit, you know, I, I don't really take the warnings too seriously. But, well, but, we could, but here's my point to you. We yeah. could just leave. And that, well, to me, is a far purer version of mm. what the Brexit leavers voted for than mm. the one that you, as a former Brexiteer, uh, now believes is in this plan, is Brexit. I don't think it is Brexit. And I well, think there's a betrayal element to what this plan is to those who voted to leave. Well, here's why I disagree with you, that we, we simply don't feel that that would actually happen, because what happened last week in Parliament is that Parliament voted that there will be no option of no deal. That is what Parliament's current view is. So the risk you take in your scenario is paralysis. Because, for example, to leave with no deal on the 29th of March, you need about five pieces of primary legislation, one of which is set setting our own tariffs. We can't set our own tariff without that primary legislation. We can't keep the border open before Northern Ireland and Ireland without primary legislation. And, of course, on fishing and farming. If we can't get those through Parliament... Now, you know, I'm a Brexiteer... But that is your job. There is I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but hang on. <laughs> that is your job job as Parliament is to deliver what people voted for. You are servants of the people. It is not your job to say, we've run out of time. You've had two years to get this, right? Right, the planning for this should have happened day one, two years ago. It is an absolute disgrace that we do not have enough planning in place for a potential leaving with no deal, because that was always a potential option from Theresa May's position over a year ago. I could have told you a year ago we might be in this position. Everybody knew she was heading for a gigantic fudge that would please nobody. And now here we are, the clock is ticking, we're two months away, and it could be we are woefully ill-prepared. And I blame the politicians who have not got us in the right place to have a choice. And but also, it affects our bargaining position with the EU. They know we're not ready. So well, they've we, got us by the short and curlies, we, haven't they? We have been making preparation. We continue to make preparations for no deal. Why are we not we're prepared? Talking, Why Piers, are we not Piers, prepared? Piers, Why Piers, have you, you have politicians... You've all been squabbling around for two years. Why have you not prepared this country Piers, properly to leave are, with no deal? We, we are preparing, and I, I don't have the fear from no deal. You said it yourself, but you're not listening to yourself. Earlier on, you said Parliament, which is not the government, yeah. Parliament is not in a place at the moment because the majority in Parliament... I I agree. I agree, no but deal. you're the, you're so, not Parliament. So, uh, you're not out. just Parliament. Just, you're the government. You're not and you've just you've just spelled out that we are not ready for a no deal exit. And I say to you, as a member of the government, why are we not ready? You no, should I have haven't. had this country ready no, for any eventuality. No, no you're, you're, you're listening to yourself and you're assuming then that's my position. Okay. I said we are working for no deal and preparing for no deal, but Parliament, as was demonstrated last week, does not want no deal, which means the government cannot get primary legislation through and it will cause chaos. So the only option currently on the table for an orderly Brexit is the withdrawal agreement. So whatever you believe the end state should be, whether it should be Canada plus or Norway or a, a, just a free trade deal and nothing else, right? You need a withdrawal agreement mm -hmm. with a backstop. And this is the best option we have on the table. And at the moment, what is happening, Labour are, you know, sowing the seeds of chaos because they think that will get them, uh, you know, the, the, the hands on the keys of power at number 10. And, of course, a number of colleagues on all sides who want to scupper Brexit think that actually by causing this paralysis in Parliament, they right, can stop final Brexit. final question, final and question. It, which okay. would be very bad. Right. I think it would unleash forces that none of us know where this ends up. If well, we, if I, th we I don't think... I think we should, not enough people I think are being we should, persuaded. I think we should assume nobody knows where it's going to end up. We're in completely uncharted waters. One of which is that if Theresa May was to lose by over 200 tonight, as seems quite likely as things stand, 
and even if it's over 150, it'd be the biggest drubbing in the history of this country. How can she, with good conscience, possibly continue as Prime Minister if she was to get that kind of level of rejection? Surely the honourable thing, if she's to lose by the historic number tonight, is to, is to fall on her political sword and resign, isn't it? Well, let's see what happens tonight. My focus, the government's focus, is to speak mm. to as many colleagues to actually remind them that, you know, let's not let ideological purity be the enemy of the good. Let's get Brexit mm. done. Let's deliver it and get out on the 29th of March. That is what my focus on. That's what the government's focusing on tonight. And I hope that colleagues will reflect today and vote for the withdrawal agreement rather than chaos and paralysis. Okay. Out of interest, just one last thing. Mm. Why is your loyalty more to a Prime Minister facing utter disaster than it is to the voters who voted Leave, given you were a Leaver. I don't get it. I don't no. get why you haven't, on a point of principle, resigned from the government and said, I cannot support something which is such a disaster, and actually I'm a Leaver to my bootstraps, and actually I'm going to resign. Isn't that the right thing for a man like you in your position to do as a Brexiteer? My loyalty is to my constituents in Stratford-on-Avon and the whole of my country. I want to deliver Brexit. I think this withdrawal agreement, whichever way you think you know, the final um, destination needs to be, has to be in place for us to get out on the 29th of March in an orderly way that protects jobs, that actually delivers on Brexit. Because if we don't deliver on the instruction of the 17.4 million people... By the way, you know, the last okay. government sent out a pa pamphlet saying it is an instruction, which is why it's our duty to deliver it, mm. which is why I'm in your studio or, or, yeah. on camera now saying to colleagues, look, think long and hard. Do not let the ideological purity yeah. become the enemy of the good. Let's yeah, get I think, Brexit well, I think done. the problem is your colleagues know that this isn't Brexit.